Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll show you how to determine if your car has an excessive draw on the battery. This will cause your vehicle not to start, especially after sitting overnight. I'll also show you how to find out which circuit is causing that draw. But before I get started, let me explain what a parasitic draw is and how automobile electrical systems work. It all starts with the battery. When the battery is fully charged, it has about 12.6 volts. Your electrical components, they all need battery power. Headlights, blower fan, power windows, computers, they all depend on that battery to provide power. To keep up with the electrical demand, your vehicle needs a way to charge that battery. And that's the job of the alternator. This charges the battery whenever the engine is running. If you want to know more about how to check your charging system or how it works, check out my video called Charging System Problems, How to Test the Alternator and Battery. I'll put a link in the description along with the tools I used in today's video. Once you've finished driving the vehicle and the vehicle is shut off, all the electrical components should shut down. This will prevent the battery from draining. Now there's always going to be a minimal drain on the battery. This keeps things like the computer, the clock, and other modules alive so they can remember the settings that you've customized. It also remembers engine data. If the modules weren't allowed to stay powered on, all your settings would be lost and you would have to program everything every time your vehicle is started. The most likely cause of a parasitic draw from my experience is a light was left on, but a malfunctioning electrical component can also cause the battery to drain. If this happens, the battery will drain and the car will not start. This usually happens after the car sits overnight. There is a maximum specification for current draw when your key is turned off. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the meter so you can determine if your parasitic draw is too high. If it is too high, I'm going to show you how to trace down the circuit. I'll be using the Amp Hound 2, and this is specially made for parasitic draws. Let's get started. Now, whenever you check to do a parasitic draw, you got to make sure the key's out of the ignition. All the accessories are off and all the doors are shut. Now let me show you how to set up the meter to do a parasitic draw test. It's a good idea to have a memory saver so you don't lose your battery connection and all your presets. If you don't own a memory saver, I would recommend you buy one. You'll also need a jumper box like this one. This one works with the memory saver It'll jumpstart your vehicle and it'll pump up your tires. I'll do a full review on this jumper box with air compressor in my next video. But let me show you how to do this without using a memory saver and just using a piece of wire. So let me show you how to do this without losing connection. You're just gonna take your jumper wire and I'm gonna first put it on the negative cable here. And then next, I'm going to loosen the negative cable. Now I don't want to lose connection with the post and the terminal, but I do want, need to pull it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my wire. slide it underneath so nothing's ever broke any connection yet and now I'm just gonna pull off the terminal nothing broke connection yet it's all connected no power was lost so you should be able to have your radio intact all right, so now I'm gonna take my meter leads and these meter leads, these are the kind that have alligator clips. You can just slip on and now it has alligator clips, which these work great for everything. 
I'll put a link to these in the description along with everything else I use today. But these leads, you'll take the black lead is going on the negative terminal. And the red lead is going on the post. And then I just want to hook up the meter. I'm going to put the meter in the amp scale. And then the meter leads. The black goes to common. And the red goes to the 10 amp fused max scale. So now, as soon as I disconnect this wire, all the current that's flowing in the vehicle will flow from the red lead into the meter, out the common terminal, back to the post. So everything is going to get read by the meter. Now the last thing I'll do is disconnect this jumper wire and all the current will flow through the meter. As a general rule, the maximum allowable reading for parasitic draw is 50 milliamps. Normally, I see about half that. On this car, a 2009 Honda Civic, let's see what we get. So right now, my car is draining 736, 737 milliamps from the battery and that'll kill my battery overnight. Sometimes you gotta wait 20 minutes for your vehicle to shut off all its modules. Looks like mine just did it. So now I'm down to 16 milliamps. So this is what I wanna see on this car. 16 milliamps, I have no parasitic draw. Let me show you what this would look like if I had a parasitic draw. I accidentally left the light on that's causing this parasitic draw. And this will cause your battery not to start overnight. Let me show you the tool you'll need and how to find a circuit that's causing this parasitic draw. This is the Amp Pound 2. This tool was designed specifically to trace down and help you find that circuit that's causing that parasitic draw. Let me show you how this works. Now I've got my meter here that's reading 145 milliamp draw. I have my amp pound here. They're both in a fixture so I can show you what's going on. And then here's my fuses here. So to determine which circuit is causing the parasitic draw, I need to know what fuse has current going through it. This is the job of the amp pound. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, you will as soon as I'm done showing you how it works. Now to use the amp pound too, you just turn it on. And now it comes with a couple different fuse adapter leads. So this one, you could just open it up and you put the fuse in like this. I'm not using that. I'm just gonna use your normal meter leads. To check the fuses to see which circuit has current going through it, you wanna go ahead and check the top of the fuses at the test point. And when you see zero, 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 that means the fuse is good, but there's no current going through it. I'm gonna check the 7.5. And we have zero, 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 no current going through it. I'm gonna check the 15 amp. and also no current going through it. And then here's a 7.5 amp. So this one has 0.06 of an amp. That's 60 milliamps. So this one does have current going through it and this is our problem. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna fine tune that reading. That first test was just to find out if there was current flowing through that fuse. Now to fine tune the reading, I gotta figure out which fuse it is. So I'm gonna push fuse, and there it is. That was a mini. And then I wanna do the fuse value, and it was a 7.5, so I'm gonna push, and there's 7.5. And then I'm gonna hold this down for about three seconds, and it'll save those settings. Now we're gonna go measure again. Now I'm gonna measure the 7.5 fuse again. This was the circuit that was giving us the reading. Now we're at 0.12. So that's 120 milliamps. So minus 120 milliamps 
from 144, that's 24 milliamps, and now we're in the acceptable range. This circuit right here is causing the problem. Fuse number 22 powers up the MICU module, which powers up the interior lights and the trunk light. I'm not allowed to show you this wiring schematic, so you're gonna have to trust me. Now I wanna show you how to set up your meter in case you have an intermittent parasitic draw. You will need to have the min-max function. I also wanna show you how to set up your memory saver in case you decide to buy one. And then once I'm all done with that, I wanna show you a couple of cool features of the amp pound that nobody ever talks about. Now to use a memory saver, it's pretty self-explanatory. You will need a jumper box and your jumper box is going to need a 12 volt accessory plug or the cigarette lighter adapter, they call it. Once you plug it in, you'll get a red light. Set your jumper down and go ahead and plug in your DLC connector into your vehicle. The meter is going to be set up the same way. You've got your black lead in the comm, the red in the amp scale, and your dial is in the amps. Your black lead is on the terminal, and then we're just going to disconnect the cable, remove it, and then all I want to do is just put this to the post. I'm going to use this as a jumper to get on there. Now watch the meter as I remove the memory saver. I just removed it. I'm going to shut the door. Now we're at 37 milliamps. Now I'm going to set up min-max. So this is what you would do if you were going to look for an intermittent parasitic draw. So if you push min-max, it's going to record the minimum and the maximum reading it sees. So you can leave this meter on here overnight. So what you would do after it's sat overnight is you would come here and you'd push min-max. So it's going to show you the minimum amount of current that was drawn. And here's the maximum. So the maximum was 988 milliamps. That's almost an amp. So if you found this after letting it sit overnight, you knew you had an intermittent parasitic draw. And that's how you do an intermittent parasitic draw test. Now let me show you the amp pound. I can use the amp pound to test the health of any of my electrical components. I'm gonna do the test and then I'll explain my results. So I have it on micro and I have it on a 15 amp fuse. What I'm checking here is the fuel pump. So if I take my meter leads, these are from the amp pound and I put it on the test points like I did on the parasitic draw test. And then I go to the key, I turn on the ignition, and I'm gonna read the fuel pump. So 3.7 amps. Let me explain my results. As a rule of thumb, current should never exceed 75% of the fuse that's protecting that circuit. My fuel pump is protected by a 15 amp fuse. 75% of that would be 11.2 amps. My fuel pump was only pulling 3.7 amps. I have a healthy fuel pump. If you wanna know more about the products that I use today in this video, I'll put that in the description. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. As always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.